Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of What Now? Um, it is Wednesday and we are still in a lockdown. We are still in a pandemic, so we're still going. I forgot to look up when I started um, last year, but I know it was around this time, probably this week, that it's been a year since I started the What Now? series. And so, yeah, a t time flies. It's been a year since I started this inspirational, motivational series. I hope everyone is doing okay a year later and it's, beca it's becoming our, our normal, I guess. Um, but yeah, more inspirational guests coming up, more motivational guests coming up. And my guest today, he's already here. He's right on time. I'm happy that he's on time so I don't have to do my monologues. As everybody knows, I hate those. Let's just get him in right here, Mr. Mike Geronimo. And if you have any questions, please, Please put them in the question box so um, so I'll get to them at some point in a conversation here and hopefully everybody is doing okay. Let's see. Mike, Mike, Mike. Come on in. What's up? There you go. Hold on. I'll try to fix this light. Fix your light. We want to see you. We wanna, but wait a minute. You shine enough as it is. <laughs> Let me start. Let me start throwing out the uh, the compliments already. <laughs> Hold on. I appreciate it. Hold on. How are you doing? How is your light doing? Um, I'm good. Everything is cool. Everything is cool. We in the studio now. <laughs> me and my my nephew and 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 his fault. We are here. P two say what up. Oh wait, I've been told that this isn't a young enough shirt. So if you'll excuse <laughs> me for just one second. Hang on. Wait, wait, what? A young enough shirt? Listen, How young does your shirt need I'm, to be? I'm, I'm the I'm the stylist, the A and R. The Hello, Mr. Stylist, Mr. A and R. Everything. Right. How are you doing? So my nephew P two here, he said, Nah, Uncle Mike, you can't really do that. Nah, I'm not feeling that. Just go with the black T shirt. So. Res respectfully. Wait. Respectfully. Respectfully. Let me see. Wait, what? What are you wearing? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, you, hold on. Oh, let yeah. See. We can listen. We can do the. We can do the head to toe. We can do that if you want to. No, let me, look, I. I just want to know what is okay. P. P. Two. What's wrong with his get up now? What, listen, is, what, like, what makes it too young? Listen, nothing. Uh, nothing, is, nothing is wrong with the get up, but I'm like a real harsh critic. Like I'm like Kanye level. Right. So, so I am have, I okay? Let am me I see. Good? Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Look, look, okay, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Wait, wait. Okay. Like, fluff the hair just a little bit. Fluff the hair. All right, there you go. That's all you Yeah, need. my hair is not fluffy today. Sorry. You're perfect. Just, just yeah. a little fluff. And you think you have problems. <laughs> I had to hear about it all the way in the truck. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to taste? Yeah. I, li I like how this, how, this, how this started off with a fashion, like, you know, intro. Uh, thank you so much, nephew. Oh, he done left? She said, thank you so much, nephew. No problem. He said, no problem. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome, 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 Mike. Thank you for wanting to be part of my motivational series. I appreciate, I appreciate you. It. Um, I appreciate you. Get your shit together. Good. Put your camera down. Put your light up. Get your shirt on. Yeah, Stop. we good. Okay. <laughs> we good. Stop moving around. Sit down, please. I want to see you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting. I'm good. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so thank you for being part of my What Now series. Um, as you know, you yeah, so it's, it's for the people that are tuning in right now and who don't, uh, that don't know what the series is about. I started this series in the pandemic to inspire and motivate creatives since everything has been shut down. Right. Um, even though on your side, stop wiggling around. Wait, I wanted to make it so I'm not straining my neck to look at you. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Yes, that is better. Are you okay. good? I think so. I'm I'm okay. Yeah, we good. Yeah, okay. All right. So um you're living on a different planet as far as I'm concerned because everything is pretty much open in the States. Over here we're still sorta of locked well, down. I mean they, they say it is, but it's kind of still it's like you like technically things are open but it's not you know, it's not what it was. Depending like on where you are. Yeah, depending on where you yeah. are. Exactly. So, um, well, I just said to the people in my intro, this, today marks, or this week marks a year um, that I've been doing this. This is talk number 87. 
Yeah. Um, I took December off, so I could have been at 100, but, you know, let, I need some rest too. But thank right. you for being part of it. And uh, one of the first questions I always ask is, how has the pandemic um, affected you personally and professionally? Um, well, I, I, professionally, I'll start there. It's kind of weird because it, it kind of like galvanized me to start creating way more um and it freed up a lot of time and yeah. because it freed up a lot of time like me as a person i'm not really good at sitting and doing nothing and ironically enough right i saw that me, earlier <laughs> yeah I, I can't like not do anything so it's weird because it happened and i had already been writing like and sporadically recording before the pandemic like set in and then it's just like it kind of was just this force that was just like okay yeah like you have all the time in the world to create as much as you want in any way that you want so i think in that sense it's been it's been beneficial. good yeah in that sense personal sense i'm like everybody else in the world so you know the first thing was what's going on and, and how bad is it going to be how long will it last? And, you know, what do we have to do to make sure that we're okay? And, you know, what can you expect and what can you expect not to expect? So right. I was, I was just like everybody else, like, um, you know, it's going to be one day at a time and we got to see how to make it through all of this, you know? So that's pretty much how I decided to take it and thank God it's had its shares of highs and lows. Like, you know, all in all, my family has been okay. So I'm very thankful for that. And yeah. We, we've been, as a unit, getting through it. And that's cool. On the downside, I lost an uncle and I lost a couple of friends to COVID. So, you know, that wasn't so cool to go through. But um, one day yeah, at a time. At this point a year in, I think everybody knows somebody that lost someone or has lost yeah. someone directly. I mean, we're a year in and, and for those who still talking about, you know, this this shit ain't real, I mean, go ask around. People lost people. Nah, it's real. Yeah. It's real. It's definitely real and you know? it's uh it's life changing. Yeah. You know, it's life changing and, and it still remains to be seen like what parts of life we knew prior to it will exist, you know, once it's, I guess, back to normal. Right. You know, there's no determining. This is the new normal. I mean, for me, yeah. I, I almost forgot what it was like to have a life. Like, you know, honestly, yeah. um, it's, it's just crazy weird. It is weird because your, your whole, I think the first thing with me was, the your sense of time becoming yeah. like all distorted and i remember like those first two to three weeks and i remember saying to myself how it doesn't even matter what day it is like it, it doesn't matter if it's thursday or if it's tuesday or if it's friday and it did you know and then um yeah it's just uh what day is today Oh, that, if I'm not mistaken, Wednesday, but I only know that because I know I was talking to you today. Right. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I'm happy to help you, you know, get your calendar straight. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my, my show, my series is every Monday and every Wednesday. That's how I keep track of the days. Yeah, so, yeah. I've seen a couple of them. So I got to <laughs> commend you. They're, they're very insightful and they're very fun filled. So. Thank you. Good I appreciate you, that. Yeah. Well, this one is going to be insightful because I know you're a man of, of, of knowledge as well. And um, well, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is because you are, uh, you, you have an inspiring story. You have a journey behind you. You have a story to tell, um, you know, unlike the, the new artists that are now coming up asking me, hey, can I get interviewed by you? And I'm like, eh, it's not really the <laughs> platform for that. I mean, this is not a promote your music platform. This is a platform where 
I want to deliberately have guests that inspire me and that motivate me in this world right now, how the world is. And as much as it's become a new normal, I actually do get energy out of my own talks. So whoever's watching, I don't really care. I'm happy that's with this. <laughs> that's, what, that's how it should be. That's how it should that's be. That's how it you started. What you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's how it started. Like I started doing this to motivate myself. And in these talks I have with, with amazing people in, 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 in creative industries, I figured why not share these talks? Because if I get inspired, others get inspired. Um, going cool. back to I Mike see. G, <laughs> I met you on Clubhouse. Shout out to all the Clubhouse family. Yeah, uh, Battle for the Throne all. Club. I That's see everybody. Right. I see you, all. Ali, Jamal, Jimmy, Nature. I see everybody in there. Nate, SB, TJ, Uncle Mark, Fred. Uh, oh, Lisa, January. I see know. you. All, all the whole squad. Ali, yeah. Ali, love all of y'all. Thank, thank you guys for the support always. Uh, but yeah, I met you in there. And, you know, as much as I'm a hip hop fan and I've met all these legends, it's always still a pleasure meeting you know, people I haven't met yet that I know from, you know, whatever they were doing uh, or whatever they are currently doing. So um, I feel happy to have met you and uh, to be talking okay. to you. Yeah, I'm glad to connect to you. And what? well, thank you. And with that said, <laughs> talking about the pandemic, you just said, uh, you talked a little bit about how the, the impact of the pandemic was. Are there any things that changed about your uh, routine as far as health? I know you weren't you weren't necessarily a, a heavy touring artist at the moment, but are there certain things that changed for you in your routines other than now sitting at home? What are things that you deliberately changed? Um, you just mean with my everyday? Like yeah, like, you know, a lot of people suddenly started taking more care and being more aware of their sleep patterns or their, mm -hmm. their diets or, you know, even being being healthy as far as uh, exercise. Are there things that you've changed because of the pandemic or that gave you a one, chance? One second. One second, Pay. I'm so sorry. Gosh. Wait, did, did P2 say that that wasn't young enough? Or no, he, I, I, enough? no, I got to do a little bit of flexing on Instagram. So I had to borrow, right, I had so to borrow the chain real quick. Going to show it all for, or the He's messing up my whole interview. He was not you part of this. He needs an interview just no more to himself. No more I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, the next one's going to cost you $5. Okay. He's okay. going, he's going. So I think... um. To get to answer the question, what it did make me focus on more than anything was the spiritual aspect of things and the mental aspect of things. And like myself, uh, a couple of years ago, I had gotten into meditation. And I was doing it initially uh, at, a, at the proper pace. I would do it at least once every day. And then you know, life takes over. Yeah. And I didn't, I wasn't able to fit it into my routine as much. So I think the pandemic brought me back to that. And a couple of the people that, you know, their energy has been so dominant around me during the pandemic, they helped to bring me back to it. And that's like one of the best things ever. Yeah. Um, and then I just think, you know, mentally, like, uh, I just became more cognizant of how important it is to make sure that you're upbeat, that you're, you're not on, um, you're not being dragged down by, you know, the situation we're all in. So I just became more aware of, okay, if you feel the slightest sign of, like, you know, you feel like it's getting to you. Right. You know, talk to somebody about it. Um, you know, do what you have to do to, to just up here stay, stay in one. Stay cool, yeah. Yeah, because now more than ever, you know, you need your thinking cap, you know, with the scenario that we're all in because it affects financial, it, it affects culture, it affects, you know, just every aspect of life. So... I think those things it made me hone in more in terms of physically, like um, I was just grateful for the things I don't really do. Like I'm not a big drinker. 
Um, I never really have been, uh, you know, socially if I go out. I'm right. Or but when you got to do drink champs or something. Right. Well, so I'm at drink champs. Um, but I always drink a lot of water and, you know, I always try and eat proper and stuff like that. So, so that hasn't you know, changed just, much? Not, no, not so much. I mean, I've grub hub more than I ever have in my life. I don't know if y'all have that with you. We have similar, similar stuff. Yeah, so no. I'm, I'm grub hubbing like more than I guess I should, you know, but um, even when I do do that, I make certain that it's not like, you know, it's not always McDonald's or. Right. Or make sure it's healthy nature. food too. Yeah, so, you know. It, it, I think I don't think much changed on that note. I think if anything, it made me pay more attention to, like I said, the mental aspect and the spiritual aspect. Right. But you said you were already like getting into that more before the pandemic hit. So yeah, are yeah. you are you at this point? If you think back to that, are you happy that you were already, you know, uh, more aware of you know meditating and 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 you know taking care of your mental before this pandemic? Do you think it would have a different effect if you didn't already start all of that? Well, I think it's a mixed bag. I was happy because because I was into it, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary for me to try. And it wasn't anything that was hard for me to have to stay dedicated to. Right. And I think the other side of it was it gave me the opportunity to go further in depth with it. Right, um, you had more time for it, yeah. Exactly, and and then I would say it made me way more appreciative about it. Yeah. Because like I said, now- I'm You see what the value is. Exactly, and now, you know, like, it's so important to be able to just stop and, and be centered and take those breaths and, you know, have that one-on-one -on -one with yourself. Yeah. And then if you do that, you just in better shape to, to go at the world or whatever might come your way. So do you feel like when, I keep asking this question, but at this point, I don't even know if that's going to happen anymore. But when the world opens up and we go back to whatever normal was, uh -huh. um, do you feel like it's going to be hard for you to keep that that part incorporated in your life, in your everyday life? Or do you feel like you have to make extra room for it and be aware of it? Or will it be already part of it, whereas you are um, scheduling the rest of the life around it? I don't think it'll be as difficult. I mean, it's kind of, it may be a bit presumptuous because we're not there yet. So, uh, you know, like anything can happen. Um, right. But what I will say is I don't believe that it will be hard because if anything, it gave me, um, one, a renewed sense of appreciation to be able to do it and to understand it and to implement it and incorporate it into my every day. And then, two, I think because of what we're all going through, it made it that much more it ceased to be like an option and it became more of a necessity. Right. Yeah. And so now that I think because I view it as being as essential as to me is no different than doing push ups or or drinking water or Yeah, it's part of your exercise. Gym, except right. it's mental exercise. Exactly. So yeah. I don't I don't foresee it being anything that's difficult for me to integrate into my everyday even after, you know, whatever our new- That's family. good. That's good. And and the reason why I ask these questions to my guest is because this is important to share with mm -hmm. everyone. Because th again, this is the essence of this series. The What Now series yeah. is to help people find the tools or the ways or the inspiration to cope with whatever they got going on in this situation in the world. And right. maybe people haven't been able to find their way or haven't found the right tools yet. So I get bits and pieces from every guest on how they deal with it and what they're doing and how they change their routines for the better uh, mentally and physically. So that's right. that's really important. So thank you for sharing what no, you're doing no. and yeah, and, 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 and how it affects you. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's important, like I said, especially with like there's people that 
you know, they don't have anyone with them. Right. So, you know, and, and those are the ones that I have the most concern for because um, you need somebody to bounce stuff off of. Yeah. Like, you need somebody to just be able to say, you know, okay, I'll admit it, I'm, I am worried. Or, okay, I'll admit it, I am scared. Or, okay, right, I'm, right, exactly. I don't know, you know, what to do. And if you don't have that, then you need a way where you can become your best friend. Yeah. And where you're listening to yourself just as much as you're providing those answers. You know, so um, it's essential. It's a sense. I've said it in, in several talks before. Like I I was trained for this pandemic with the stuff that I've been through by mm -hmm. myself. So when this pandemic hit, I had the the experience to deal with these things being by mm -hmm. myself. So being isolated and being in a lockdown was not anything new for me. Um, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's easy. You know, I'm not going to say him like, oh, it's a breeze for me. No, because it's still something that's going on in the world and it affects every part of your life. But the part of being isolated and having to deal with things by myself and being my own best friend was something I was already trained in. So that mm -hmm. was, I guess, my my luck in this instance. How but... are you getting by? Are you OK? I mean, I know I hear your voice every morning. I know, you know, you family like everybody, but are you okay? Are you getting through I'm, it? I'm okay. But, I mean, I have my days where I'm not okay. And there, there are days that I'm tired of, of being in the house because I feel like my whole life is on hold. I mean, you have a family. You know, you're married. You have children. Uh, most people have a partner or maybe live with their mom or take care of their dad. And, and I'm just by myself. And it's just, it's, you know, I'm okay being by myself. I love myself. I don't have to deal with anybody. I don't have responsibilities. I don't have to mm -hmm. consider anybody. But that is, on, on the flip side, it's like, I also don't have the human touch or, you know, the hug when you feel down or the person that makes your food when you don't feel like it because it's a lot of energy that is being sucked out of you dealing with a pandemic. And the only, in the beginning, the only, um, I guess, uh, thing that was somewhat of a, of a uh, how do you say that, Con consolation, is the fact that everybody in the world is going through the same thing. That had never happened before. You know, looking at the yeah. U.S. And, and, and Europe, or my country, yeah, the Netherlands. It's, it's, un it's unprecedented. This yeah, it's, for, it's, it's you know, there was for. always times in the US where I'm like, oh, that's only happening in America. And I don't know how you're dealing with that. Or you guys don't even know what's going on in my country. But now it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. we're all going through the same thing. And yeah, everybody deals with it different. And everybody's situation is different. Like people have kids in the house and driving them crazy. They can't do their work. And I'm like, well, I don't have any kids. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, at least Tell I can work. <laughs> Tell me yeah. about it. My work is not interrupted. I can keep working, but that's also a bad Lucky thing because you. that wears me out. Like I go to sleep wow. at two o'clock and then I wake up at seven and I have no rest, even though I'm only sitting on my couch. So, right. I mean, it's not uh, easy. It's no, not it's easy. not easy. It's Clubhouse not easy. definitely was a welcome uh, new uh, distraction, but also a means of being social and um making progress in in my business so that's mm -hmm. that was a good thing i don't want to talk about me when we're talking about you uh okay, but thank sorry. you for asking thank you for asking uh, I, appreciate it. I, got, I gotta ask like, i so. appreciate that um but we're going back to mike g because um I, you know aside from this <laughs> aside from this pandemic um uh, i want to ask you about your journey because there are a couple of things that i want to touch on which i do with a lot of uh, creative people in order to um inspire those who may want to do something creative in their lives so one of the things is uh at what moment in your life uh, did you feel like hey i can do this for a living or i can actually become an artist what was the defining moment for you um with me it was weird like i don't even really think 
first of all, hold on. This studio is cold, so I'm getting my Air Jordan hoodie regardless to what he said. You don't need to be fashionable. Just just <laughs> stay warm. Oh, my gosh. This dude. Like, this no. is... I'll do so, you're the only um, person that keeps doing this. Like the, the from all the eighty something guests, you're the only person that's doing this. I'm sorry. No, but what I was gonna say with me, it was different because I like um like I didn't. It's like I, I started doing it, and everything with me happened so overnight, right? Like one minute I, I'm like rhyming in the cafeteria at high school and then the next minute Irv finds me at a talent show and yo I got a studio and then like the next minute there's a limo in front of my crib taking us to the source awards so that's me, crazy you know, yeah it all happened like that so I don't even think that I personally have that moment where I was like um okay I know I could do this as an artist and I think the closest that I came to that was I remember the talent show that I met Irv at and I remember like I think it was like five or six acts that performed that night and um everybody that went on before me they was throwing bottles at them, they threw records Whoa. at them. That's intimidating. At them. Facts and and like so I I got up and I spit and like the whole auditorium got quiet and I was just standing there like oh shit and then I just heard somebody out of nowhere like yo 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 you got another one to do you got another song and I was like uh nah but I could freestyle and then I started freestyling and in my head I was like okay I guess I did something right because somebody just like. I think I think that's like the closest thing that I had to okay, yeah, you could do this if you want to. That that was like the closest Right. Thing I think that that's I dope. Yeah. And and it's it's interesting because when I ask these questions, you know, uh all these artists that I've interviewed, that that question is never asked. So that it's interesting to asked. hear what hang on, huh? the battery is dying. Don't go anywhere. Of course, the battery is dying. Some guests are prepared. Some guests are not prepared. I'm not going to name any names, but hey, guess who's not prepared? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Five minute break? Yeah, I'm oh, here. There you go. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry. What you asking? I said the qu that question is never asked. So, you know, for me, it's interesting to, when I ask people, um, what the defining moment was for them to start their careers or to really push their careers and take it serious is different mm -hmm. for everybody <clears throat> else. Like, you know, what yeah. we as fans or as the audience may think would be, would have been the defining moment is not always the defining moment. So. No, I, I think like, um, I think what gave me more of a of a okay, I'm on the right path was like just the people around me, because yeah. they seem to think so much that things were gonna happen for me, and I would just be like, okay, if you say so, and I would just keep, you know, kind of in an oblivious sense, I would just be like, okay, if it's not broke, don't fix it, and just keep doing what you're doing, and if it's meant to go down, and it will, you know, and, and for the most part, that's kind of how it unfolded. Right. And I think that that was one of the, it, it may have been weird to do it that way, but I think that because I viewed it that way, that that's why, you know, it didn't affect how I tried to do anything. Right. I wasn't so much looking at it like, okay, if I don't make it, then if I do make it, then what? It was never my end or be all. It was just something that I loved right. to be able to do. So, you know, for it to end up working out and, and it's an amazing thing. Yeah, because we would not be talking if it didn't work out. <laughs> nah, right? And that would be a shame. So I'm just, another reason I'm glad that it worked out. <laughs> well, 
What's interesting is, you know, just like when I had the interview with Nature, when I announced yours, there's a couple of my friends over here, these real old school hip hop heads that were so excited, like, hey, wait, are you interviewing these Queens people? Yo, yo, legendary Queens rappers. Yeah. And so it, it kind of sparked them because, you know, we're all old and we're all like doing our thing and when and, you don't understand, because we just have like the, the young, old conversation on the way to the studio. So, you know, I, I was being told about what's old and what's young and why we're in this era and that era, but God, I'm listening. Yeah, so I was just happy to see these people being all happy about me interviewing certain folks that, that for them at the time were heroes and still, because it's, you have to understand, you know, us living over here, we got the inspiration, or well, not me necessarily, I'm not an artist, but the people out here that were doing hip hop, you know, MCing, rapping, whatever, were inspired mm -hmm. by people like you, nature, whoever. So it's like, it's, it's insane for them to see their friend from over here interviewing all these people. And it's still, again, I've met so many celebrities and I've, I've interviewed so many hip hop legends, Obviously, but it's you're still- a celebrity yourself, Pei. No, I'm not. I'm not a celebrity. I'm known, maybe, but take a <laughs> listen. Mike, take a walk to answer them with me. Everybody's gonna be like, Mike Geronimo, and nobody knows who I am. So yeah, no worries. Maybe in New York. Maybe I'll get recognized in New York because I, I, I do. I was gonna say, I was gonna say you very humble, but I get it. It's cool. It's not about me, it's about you. Uh okay. moving forward. Um, you know, we talk about, um, hey, what's up, Jerry? Oh, I saw a couple people asking about the, the painting, the De La Soul painting. So, uh, yeah, for those who want to know about that artist, I had an interview with him as well. So go on my IGTV, scroll all the way down. He's one of the first people that I interviewed because everyone is commenting. Sure. His name is Mike Thompson. But it so, got to yeah. go to the panel. And uh, Mike G officially now is the the least still sitting guest I've ever had. No, the <laughs> phone is dying, and I don't. It want doesn't it to die matter. I'm so sorry. It, no, you know what? it. I'm hey, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> I was just stating facts. Okay. Um, as I'm Jimmy real. says, respectfully. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so talking to a lot of people in the industry. There's a lot of things that, you know, you go through in your career. I mean, you've worked with the greatest of the greats. You've worked with the Jay-Z's and the Pup Daddies and the whoever's. So, right. you know, who, what are some of the, the, the terrible mistakes you've made in your career that turned out to be the biggest lessons that you would apply later on in your career or even, you know, give out to people that are starting out or coming up? Oh, my God. I think... Uh... We don't have enough time to cover all of my mistakes. Just, just one or two. <laughs> I, I love um, that you say that because we all make mistakes and we all learn from it. That's how you gain yeah, experience. That's how you, it mistakes are experience. It has to be that way. Like you have to learn from from those things that didn't necessarily. We go, bro. I'm gonna put it right here. I think the biggest thing that I learned that I was like, okay, don't um, don't not not be aware of it is. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. These people are commenting in these comments. Yo. <laughs> I think the biggest thing I learned is uh, don't think that, uh, like, like be, be very mindful of how you treat people. Like, oh, yeah. And, and not to say that I have ever had an issue with not treating people. I got to go. Like, you just got to. You got to treat everyone with the dignity and the respect. And the reason I say that is because the intern today can become the, the you know, the they CEO could be the, of tomorrow. Exactly. They could be the CEO of tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and, um, so always take the time and don't ever take advantage of the fact that you have people in this world that subscribe to what you do. And yeah. Because they, they didn't have to choose. To, to subscribe to you. I swear, if you don't sit still. <laughs> I am. I'm trying to make the camera so that it don't. I'm so sorry. But I think. Uh, I'm getting dizzy here. No. Um, 
never take advantage of the fact that people opted to to give you uh, a part of them by subscribing to what you do. Yeah. And that's that's major. And because people do do that, because can you do. can you give a little bit more detail? Because what's you don't have to give all the details, but what was the specific situation that made you you know realize that? Um. Was there an intern that you just like, recently treated wrong? Just, no, I was gonna say just recently, I got a well. No, there's two instances that come to mind. Um, I got a Facebook about a year and a half ago to two years ago, um, and it was a soldier, and he wrote me and he said, "You know, I'm a I'm a big fan of yours, and you know I've been listening to you forever, and." You know, I listen to you while I'm on my detail and whenever I miss home or whenever I think I won't get home, I listen to your first album and it makes me want to keep fighting to get home. And, you know, my dad was in the service. I, I like, lived on an army base, so army life, I'm pretty right. familiar with. But I understand the sacrifice that people make when they go. And, you know, and they go overseas and they're stationed somewhere and they're far from home. And, you know, they're in the middle of a place that nobody would wish to be. And for someone to say that something I did helps them to get through the day, which helps them part of me get home. Yeah. That's amazing to me, you know. And, and so that was something that reinstilled in me, like, don't take any of this for granted. Right. Um, and in another instance, not too long ago, a kid wrote me, I think, on IG. And he was like, I don't know if you remember, but you used to live in Brooklyn and you were at this, this store. And I was in the store shopping and I didn't have enough money to get these pants. So you brought me four pairs of jeans. And I don't remember doing it. Right. And he was like, you know, I never thought that I'd be able to get in contact with you to thank you for what you wow. did. But you got to know for a 16 year old, for, you know, one of their favorite rappers to do that. that yeah. The world. And again, I didn't recall the incident, but I just thanked him and I felt good that. It was that normal for you to do that, that you don't remember? Did you do that for a lot of yeah. people? I mean, I. I can't remember all the things that I've done, but it wasn't out of the ordinary. For you, to yeah. Like, like, I would leave money in, like, homeless people's pockets. Like, I would leave $500 in a homeless person's pocket. Where were you when I was homeless? <laughs> Nobody out here was doing that when I was on the street. <laughs> no, but you know what? Because my frame of thought would always be, if I could do something that, that shows somebody in the world that, you know, there still are those things that you don't have the answer to, but they just right. happen because they just do. And if that was going to make somebody's day, you know, easier or their load lighter, then I would do things like that. And it didn't matter to me. My joy came from helping somebody out. You right. Know, or my joy came from, I wonder how much easier their day is going to be. Oh, yeah. With just this little start. So I'm, like, for me, none of it ever, like, I don't get happy from the things I get from it. I never did. It just isn't me as a person. I get happy because of what I can do for the people right, around Right, paying it forward, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that was always me. And I think now I'm older, I accept that, and I'm okay with that. And that's just who I am. That's just who I'm going to always be. Well, I'll call you when I ever end up on the street again, you know? But no, that won't happen. That won't happen again. Um, I got you. I did. Good, that happy, sad, I got you. Yeah, but that's not going to happen again. I mean, it's no. years ago. Um, yeah, we're not speaking that into existence. Um, no, no, we speak a good thing. Right, that. exactly. Uh, exactly. There are a couple of questions from people, so let me just see what they're if, if there are serious questions because you know these people that we know are always full of you know jokes and why stuff. They, they are they they would they trying to have a little fun right now um, ask something. 
Yep, Jimmy, nope, we're not doing your question. Uh, wow, Jamal, we're question? not doing your thing. Wow, what's um, your question? I'm going to ask them what, you know what, I'm going to ask the question that Jamal asked. Uh, do you know where, originally, where Abel and MJG are from? <laughs> <laughs> that's an inside joke, people, that's an inside joke. So, um, uh, <laughs> you're never going to live that one down. This is might until your dying day. This is going to be the running joke. So I know. you know I, it's, I, it I, is what it is. You're just going to have to accept it. It's um, Houston, right? <laughs> Ain't it Houston, right? Poor Arthur. Poor Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, that was funny. Um, go. <laughs> Yeah, I swear to God, in, in 10 years, I'm still going to be, you know, hitting you up with that. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll be right there. And we'll be laughing. We'll be laughing yeah, about it. You know? I know. When, whenever somebody is down, just just throw that out there. You know, just, just, ask, just ask me where Equal yeah. or MJG right. are. And, you'll and we can all have a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Thank you for cheering us up with that one. You're welcome, Jay. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, yeah. So a lot of people see you as an inspiration starting to um, you know, rap or, you know, do something in the industry. Who are some of the inspirations that you had and who are still up until the day your, your inspirations? Um, oh, man, there's so many. Like now, I mean, um, uh, Drake inspires me a lot now. Um, wow. We yeah. were just talking about Little Dirk in the truck. Me and my nephew were just talking about Little Dirk. Right. Um, Jay Z inspired me, like with the congratulations to hold the whole thing with Louis Vuitton and yeah. and, and, and the, the 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 whole deal that he did with Louis Vuitton. I, I thought that was fascinating, and that's inspiration. I, I get inspiration from everywhere and from everyone. Right. You know, so. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like my well, it kids. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be music. Like, you can be inspired no, by your grandpa. My kids. Or... I think my kids, they're, they're the biggest source of inspiration. Right. Without a doubt, they, they're the biggest source of inspiration. They make me, even down to the songs that I record, like now they're like, um, Dad, you should do that. Or don't do that one, Dad. Like, not that beat. It makes sense, so, huh? Yeah, and and it'll make sense. So and just knowing that um, that knowing that knowing that your kids ain't stupid because they make sense. <laughs> yeah, that I you mean, raised them right. They're, they're the lineage. They're the next part of the story. Right. They're the next chapters. They're the next pages. So I don't think anyone in this world under the sun inspires me more than them. Right. I'm sorry, people. For for those people that are actually commenting on that on that uh, uh, MJ. What you're still with the UGK and the M A four? Yeah, but, the, but those people don't understand. It's a joke. No, they're not from from Texas. I mean, maybe no, they are. So I don't even know. You see, you have to explain the whole. Yeah, don't worry. Why about I'm it. the object of ridicule? You yeah, don't worry, about it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Thank you for for explaining to to us who your inspirations are. Who are some of the you, you work with everybody? Who are some of the people that you absolutely still want to work with? Who are on your bucket list? Oh man, because um, we're speaking this into existence right now. It's funny because I think That's a great question. Last night I was thinking of um, like I definitely uh want to do this song with uh with Lincoln Park with Mike oh, Shinoda. Nice. And we've been talking a little bit about getting that underway. So that's that's one of the things I would love to do. Um, I wouldn't mind doing another joint like with like Hold and Rule and, and X just for the sake of nostalgia. Oh, that'd be great. I wonder yeah. how it would come out right now. Um, there's a lot of people. Uh, I love Jasmine Sullivan. Oh, I love her too. That would make Joe a great Scott. collaboration, actually. Yeah, Joe Scott is another person who I'm like a tremendous fan Throwing of. Throwing it so out there and speaking it into existence. That, um, 
Oh, you got a whole list. And they broke up now, but if Blink-182 was still a right. group, I would love to do a song with Blink-182. So I have all these people from all these different genres of music that if you gave me enough time, I could probably give you a more accurate bucket list. Right. There's, there's no, that's fine. Yeah. You came with a lot of names. And uh, just so you know, and I tell this to everybody when we speak this into existence, when this happens, feel free to put me on the thank you somewhere, oh, you. you know, yeah. cut me in, you, you know. Might call the song pay. You might just call it pay. And you heard it here first, people. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, just, yeah, just, just put me in there somewhere. I got you. I promise you. So, um, talking about, you know, what you're doing now, are there any, uh -huh. any, uh, well, obviously there are projects coming up. You're in the studio. What can we oh, expect yeah. from you in the near future? Uh, the first two singles will probably be out early June, late May within that time frame. Um, and then I think that the overall project will probably be out within July, like uh, within the second week of July. So looking forward to that. Um, should the world be reopened by that point in time, there's, you know, shows that have to be done and traveling right. that's going to be done. So looking forward to that. And then um, there's other endeavors that I'm involved in now, like that I just want to try and grow, you know, and bring more into a state of fruition. So Would you go back stuff, to DJing again? Probably not. No? <laughs> Why not? Why not? And it's not so, I mean, you know why? Because, um... I can see you behind the turntables. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I had fun as a DJ, like, and it's something that once you do it, like, you don't ever use, lose your love for it. Right. So I would, I, you know, I'm not saying it's a, it's a, it's a never again thing, but I just think that with everything that I am involved with, there's probably no way. Um, so I'm more now into, you know, like, I've owned my own business now for, like, 12 years um my installations company my security installations company so i'm actually in the process of opening another wing of it in another nice. state um and running the existing wing here in new york um so there there'll be more of that happening and then on the cannabis side of things like you know i'm putting my hat in the ring as well with that yeah. and um there's strains that, you know, are being developed and there's accessories that are, I'm actually getting ready to put out, you know. And, and oh, you got a lot going on. Yeah, I have enough to keep my hands full for right now. So I see, I but, see. I mean, but you never know, like you never know, you know. And like I said, I'm very not comfortable with just sitting still, as you can see. I I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta always be doing something. So who know? Who know? So uh, nature asked a question. Uh, do you have? Well, first of all, uh, when can we? Ex that's my question. When can we expect a song with you and nature on it? Um, and then the, as soon as Nate and me get in the studio, which I think is gonna be sooner than everybody expects. I hope like, so. Yeah. So that's a given. You know, and I'm looking forward to having my brother on my project. So that's dope. You know, like, and he's not just a friend of mine. I'm a huge nature fan. So I'm just honored that he's going to be a part of what I'm doing. I spoke to MOP this morning, and they're doing a song with me for the project as well. So I'm I have to talk to them because I was supposed to be on their album. <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, well, you could do something for me too. <laughs> You go the doors. Oh, open. really? You don't even know yeah. what I can do. I might mess up the whole project. I, I don't think. So. <laughs> I don't think so. Do so, you have a name? Um, do you have a name for your up and coming project already? Yeah, it's can we know it? Called, yeah, it's called Thirty Sixteen, and Thirty Sixteen. That. Yeah, that's my dad's. That was his badge number. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So. Well, this is actually his dad, and that's actually my dad. Um, oh, but, nice. Yeah, so, I see him. 
So the project is called 3016, and that's just my way of uh, doing a tribute to my dad. Right. Because he was the inspiration for me to even, him and my son, my family, they were all the inspiration for me to even do the project that I ended up working on now. So, yeah, 3016. Right. So <clears throat> I know there's a lot of fans in this in this uh, live tuned in. How do you go about people hitting you up, wanting to work with you, uh, have you on their projects? How does that work? How can people submit stuff or? I'm really accessible. Like you can reach me. I mean, nowadays everything is DMs and stuff like that. So do you do I'm you check them yourself? Do they go forward to a manager? Mostly. Or Mostly I do. Mostly I do. I mean, I have people that, that are there. You know, my wife plays a, a great part. Shout out Shelly. She does a great Shout job. out to your wife because she, she hooked me up with the bio and everything. Yeah, so, so, so thank you for that. She was super nice. Yeah, so she's there. Um, shout out my manager, Shampoo. You know, YNVS, they're there. So, right. you know, but to reach me is not hard. You can DM me on Instagram. Um, we have the website, MikeGeronimoMusic.com. And if you're a producer, you can submit beats to beats at MikeGeronimoMusic.com. Um, what are your what is your what is your criteria though? Because the reason I ask these things is I don't want people to now bombard you with all kinds of requests for collaborations. Um, mm. You know, people have to understand that sometimes it has it has to fit in your in your schedule. It has to fit in yeah. your projects and your release <laughs> right. schedule. It has to be something that you feel like okay, this is dope. I can associate myself with this. It's not about mm. money. It's not about how much you need to pay for you no, know collaboration no. i'm very big on on things being organic and i'm very big on things being not forced right and i'm very big on things being as they should like if it all connects and if it if there's no fight to it connecting then that's what i shoot for and right granted there are those people that i'm like okay this song is in is is particularly for this person and this reason and right so yeah there's some of a schematic feel to what i'm doing but for the most part i'm just more about the energy and does it make right. sense to do and usually if it adds up if it makes sense to do it doesn't really take a lot to get it done you right. know like it just unfolds and that's been most of my career. Like it just unfolds if it's meant to go down and if the energy's right. And that's pretty much where I stand, you know, with it. Like as long as it fits into with what it is I'm doing, the zone that I'm in, right. the overall message of the whole entire project, then I'm all for it. Well, I'm going to give some advice out to the people that are now thinking about hitting, hitting anybody up for a collaboration. Make sure that you have a plan. You know, make sure that you know what you're going to do with the project, where it's going to yeah. be released, how it's going to be released. Because I get so many questions for my clients like, oh, can they work together and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm asking you, what, what, what are you going to do with this? Is it just a song with somebody that you want on there? Because that's not going to work. Like, have a plan, right. approach people professionally. And, you know, oh, yeah, like yeah. definitely. And on that side, too, like it can't not count for anything. Like right. I might be big on vibe. And okay, so now I only see your forehead. <laughs> I know it's because it is. It was slipping. <laughs> Yo, you are the most wobbly guest I ever had. <laughs> no, the because the, I have this whole new ring light thing, right? And the, like the. Yeah, now you the, need a the, solid like tripod or something. <laughs> God help me with these things. Like this is all new. To you didn't me. ask me beforehand. <laughs> I know. I should have. Well, duh. you're learning from this live, so the next one yeah. should be better. Right, it should be better. But um, <laughs> yo, it just has to make sense, Pay. And yeah. if it makes sense, then it's then it's what I do. And if it feels right, then I go with it. And if it doesn't, and it doesn't add up, everything ain't for everybody. Everybody ain't for everything. Yep. I'll hit you up with something that makes sense so I can get a collaboration with you. <laughs> That's what's up. I'll be the folks for it. <laughs>
<laughs> Jim, Jimmy's talking about Wild Mike. Uh, let me see if there is some actual questions in here. Um, oh, this may be a good one. Uh, DJ Johnny Wishbone. Are you looking to sign to a major or, sh uh, or straight independent? No, as of now, I'm more than likely going to opt to remain independent as long as it makes sense to right. do so. So I have my own company, which is QMB Inc. And I have QMB Entertainment Inc. And I have distribution. And I'm really big on running my own lemonade stand. So I'm not very eager to, you know, become To water it down. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not easy to be a part of the machine. Like, right. We've been there and we've done that and that's cool. You know how it works. So yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, we're coming to the end of our lovely... We are? Yeah. we got a couple minutes left. You have something yeah. to tell me still or... Mm, uh, no, I think we covered everything, I think. I was just asking. <laughs> don't worry. Um, no. Unless you got like something you were asked. I don't well, know. I I was gonna ask you before we close out this conversation. Is there any life motto or um, is, uh, advice that you live by that you want to give out to the people that will be watching this? Um, I don't know about a motto. Just some uh, life advice that you live by. Yeah, just love it. Just appreciate it. I Like me personally, I think appreciation is the key to everything. I think once you figure out that, you know, there's so many things that we all take for granted that, you know, just because life moves at the pace that it yeah. moves at, you may not acknowledge certain things or you may even, you know, forget to give a little bit of acknowledgement. To, and I just mean the little things like, like you don't have to wake up tomorrow. You don't have to be able to 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 be in the middle of a of a, a warm day. You don't have to have good food, good yeah. people, good laughs, good moments. None of those things are guaranteed to any of us. So I would say just appreciate all the things that make up the picture. Focus you know, on the positive good. and the blessings. Yeah. And and I think once you do that and you start to hone in on that abundance of like of of that gift that we all get to 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 see and witness and to feel and to experience every day that we're lucky enough to wake up it is all a good thing yeah. even when bad things come with it it's still the most amazing thing in the world to be able to open your eyes and get those 24 hours yeah. of another day's worth of an experience you not you do not have to receive that. So, if anything, I would just say like appreciate it all. Um, have fun. Don't take it too serious. Um, and just have a balance. And 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 if you do those things, it it's it's one of the things that I appreciate about you that you have a great sense of humor. And you don't take yourself too serious, which is why we can oh, laugh oh, at you. No, um, no. Yeah, it's I'll one of the things I appreciate that. about you. Thank you. Yeah, we all have to laugh at ourselves, you know? We can't you laugh at to, ourselves. Right? Then... Like, you have to. Yeah. Like, if you can't laugh at yourself, then, then honestly put, I don't even want people around me that don't know how to laugh at themselves. Right. Like, like I, that, that's not the type of energy I want around me, you know, like. Nobody's above that. No. I'm a clown. That's why I keep joking with you. I know I can do that with you because I know you. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't That's do this true. with everybody. But, uh, no, nah, I'm flattered, <laughs> big girl. I'm down. Thank you. Thank well, you. that's because you won't, you won't shut off your camera and be like, peace out if I clown you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody might do that. Uh, I'm not chancing it with people I don't know. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for being a guest and for always, you know, sharing your experiences and being open about, you know, how you experience this pandemic and um, and how you stand in life. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you having me. This was cool. This was really cool. Yeah, we're finally done. We got that out the way. <laughs> Is that not?
this was cool. I, like I yeah. said, it flew past. So I'm like, yeah, we done already? Damn. Would you want to do another one when your project drops? Yeah, I would love to. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can do that. Because I mean, I may run out of like, guests at some point. I mean, this is I'm I've been a year at this, so. Well, if you don't have anyone else, you have me. <laughs> Thank I, mean, you. I don't know, you know, if if that like you have me, if you don't have anybody else. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, but for now I'm I'm still booked up. I see Mike Hansen here. I got him coming up as well. Uh, who's who's a pretty inspiring person himself. I have a bunch I of people, did. but I would love Shout to. Mike. Mike is actually on my project as well. Oh really? Yeah. Well, yeah. looking forward to the project dropping because that will be right before my birthday, probably. So, yeah, that might be a great gift. And then we can maybe talk I'll, about the I'll, project. Yeah, and I'll have something else for, for you gift wise as well. You Is it go. shoes? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Close. Uh, but um, we actually have a commemorative 25th anniversary edition uh the natural jacket oh wow being made oh now. you were telling me about the jackets you just didn't tell me what yeah. jackets they were so well we're doing two versions we're doing one for my company and yeah they fit they definitely fit bro uh but, but um what you call it um they're they're varsity jackets they're vintage varsity right. jackets but we're having some made, but since your birthday's coming up and you're like one of the coolest people oh, thank on the you. Side, then I think that it's only right. I appreciate that. I will wear it with proud pride. Pride. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um but yeah, we're over an hour. I don't want to take up more of your time. Go kill it in the studio. Uh I thank will. you so much and uh yeah, we'll 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 talk. So Thank yeah. you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for being a guest, and, and we'll talk on the side. I, I have to have you click yourself out because Instagram changed this, and I can't click you out. So. Oh, so I have to just. Yeah, you have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See so. yourself out, please. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to go to work now. Yes, go to work. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, that was another great talk with Mr. Mike Geronimo. I'm so happy that he had the time to, um, yeah, to talk to me about how he's experiencing the pandemic, how it was for him coming up and what his inspirations are and what he's coming up with. So we can uh, look forward to that. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Uh, I'll be back next Monday with another amazing inspiring guest um stay tuned yeah we'll, we'll we'll keep it going every monday every wednesday i'm going towards 100 but it's definitely been a year this this uh this month so yeah thanks so much everybody and i'll see you guys later peace